one. And I want to first and foremost thank you very much for coming uh, during Friday for um, your weekend at 4 o'clock. It's kind of a, you know, we wanted to do a little bit more during on the Sunday, but it will happen if you know, we realize, oh, shoot, it's Easter Sunday this year, this week, so we really can't do that. So, again, I'd like to thank you guys all for coming out. Um, I also want to quickly, briefly introduce you to some of our staff that we're going to be presenting to you of our Sea of Japan today. First and foremost, our uh, friends from True World are Survivors. They are our team that actually helps make this happen. And, you know, for between the two of us, we always work very hand in hand to try to get the best fresh product possible from Japan to here, to Orlando. And, you know, a lot of times it's, it's something that we take for granted. You know, nowadays it's everything's logistics and logistics and timing and weather and, you know, we, we go through everything around here. Whether in Japan or whether in here, it's it's a lot that we want to do all the time. And holidays in Japan, holidays here, you know, it's always a struggle. But um, you know, again, we slowly but surely we've been very much getting improvements on this, and we want to kind of showcase, you know, a little bit of what we got to offer. And again, it's all seasonality, right? So right now, what we in season right now is what we wanted to feature. That's why we didn't really list off all the items of what we are going to be doing prior to, because we don't we weren't too sure what we would get as well too. Plus, we wanted to be able to cover a lot of it. Uh, I want to introduce you to Chef Alex. He's my executive sushi chef here. <laughs> and Chef Alex's assistant, David Sam, who's going to be helping us as well. <laughs> Both myself and Misa from True World will be presenting at each uh, different locations of the station. First, going to start you off with the demo of Katsuo, which is the skipjack bonito. He's, uh, Chef Alex is going to break this down so you guys can see the actual fish to be broken down. And then we're going to divide it in, into groups, so like it's a group session, and we're going to divide it to three different stations. Uh, we're going to kind of break it up into about seven to eight people at a group. Uh, we're we'll kind of start to assign people who want to be together, and we'll go all around the stations, and we'll come right back again and be here to do the tasting of all the fish. So, check it out. Good.
it's a little bit um, because it's here it has like a nice smooth flavor outside but inside of the meat it gets meaty and then um, great textures and great flavor and then when you pour the fish it breaks out into uh, the body like a taste like a uh, like smooth body taste to it um, and usually we garnish with um, I know throughout the world we have the same similar type of the fish. The bonito has been around, and a lot of the times, you know, people mishandle it a lot of the times because of the freshness of the bonito itself. And the bonito is very important is that you just saw the color of the bloodline itself too, just like tuna, anything. Right from the center part, that full flavor starts to develop, and then a lot of the times people don't really appreciate the flavor of that fish anymore because as days gets older, the fish becomes very that fishy flavor that you know you, you kind of dip so kind of more or less see. Um, and also in Spain they do a lot of the bonitos like this too and they actually process it into preserving into cans with expensive olive oil. And they range really you know pricing on all of those. And uh, again because the prized possession of the fish is that the shelf life of it is very delicate so it's got to be extremely fresh in order to enjoy the fish just like this. So my challenge is part is always to get them by uh, Mitsu is going to go over that station. Myself, I'll be going over the exotic fish that you see over here that you look at it and it's like, what is this fish? Um, it's kind of one of those very unique fish that we wanted to really showcase and highlight. So I'll be taking care of that fish down here. And then Chef Alex is going to uh, escort some of you guys over to the sushi bar on the far end uh, to go over some of the fish on that side as well too. So um, everybody kind of uh, ready to... We have a set of them? Okay, great, awesome. So then uh, we'll break up then. Great. So uh, group A, you're going to go over to the sushi bar for your first station. Uh, group D, we'll be right here with the snapper. And group C, we'll be right over here with the mm. Can we stay with you? Yeah, sure. Uh, I'm, I'm going to smoke the uh, smoke today. Shall we go there? I'm, I'm going to stay with the soap. Konnichiwa, and welcome to Morimoto Asia. I am obviously Lou Mangello. You are my friend. Thank you so very much for joining us tonight for another night of the Sakura Festival, celebrating the cherry blossoms in Japan. I have been waiting for this night for a long, long time. Not just because it's Good Friday, but because tonight we are getting to see not just how the fish is broken down, but more importantly, we get to taste it. We get to pair it with a few different sakes as well. Uh, this is very much in my wheelhouse. Let's find out which station I'm supposed to go to first. Where do you want to go first? You can go to the sushi okay. Bar. Oh, you had me at sushi bar. <laughs> so they've broken us into groups, and what they're going to do is they're, they're showing us a little bit of the processes of breaking down the fish, and then they're going to pair a number of different things with a few different sakes as well. So for those of you who are watching live, um, how many of you have been to Morimoto Asia before? More importantly, 
this is our opportunity to bond. How many of you really consider yourselves sushi aficionados or are um, like to enjoy a little sake every now and then? I had a chance earlier to sample the Morimoto Junmai sake, which is Chef Morimoto's uh, branded version. It's a it's a clear, um, very light, um, very floral and fruity sake. Very very drinkable. Um, with really anything and pairs well with I think not just any kind of sushi but any of the items on the menu. So as we wait for uh, executive sushi chef Alex to come over and sort of take us through the breaking down of the fish and the preparation of it, one of the things I love about sushi is obviously not only the fact that it's so incredibly fresh and here fish is flown in on a daily basis, but there is very much an artistry to it. Uh, I think especially um, in so many places in Asia, in, in places like Japan, I think, and everywhere really, we start to we start to taste with our other senses before we actually do with our tongue, so it's what we see, it's what we smell, and presentation uh, is so very important, especially in Japan. And here, um, they really are uh, craftsmen, not just at um, you know breaking down the fish itself, but how it's prepared, and then how it is uh, paired with some of the other flavors as well. And this is one of multiple events uh, during the Sakura Festival. There is a celebrity chef event which I believe is already sold out and I think there's two other ones coming up on the next two following Fridays. Um, they also have occasionally an omakase event where you come in, you and a very small number of people, I mean it really is ideally spent with four, really even two people to come and it's really, the omakase is sort of very loosely translated means up to the chef. Oh wait, here's, uh, here's Chef Alex.
So this is uni, this is a sea urchin. thing about uni is that um, it almost has a consistency of butter and there is a it's not fishy at all there's a there's a sweetness on the back of the palate that um, uni has and when it's it's really fresh um, for some people there's nothing better I mean if there's more I don't mind. I'll have a second one I mean I don't want that uni to go to waste So this is a frozen octopus. Normally you see any sushi restaurants, many places. But you try the first uh, This is our taco octopus. So the one thing about sushi is I think that you need, especially for something like this, is this is your opportunity to be a little more adventurous than you might be otherwise. So you might not order raw octopus out somewhere, but uh, we are getting a sample of um, a typical opti octopus that you would find at um, any sushi restaurant uh, where it will come in frozen. But I think they're working on something else, a little special for us to try. So this octopus is a Pacific giant octopus. It's only one leg. So I cut a couple. It's like twenty thousand leagues into the sea. <laughs> so this is a just suction cup. Once I took off the skin off, that's how it looks like. And right now you are having this is the fresh octopus, like a live octopus. difference um, there is a um, first of all that the textural differences on the frozen versus the fresh are incredible there is a um, there's a smoky sweetness to it as well on the far side here okay that was wonderful I got those thank you so much I could have just stayed there all day. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> oh my, what is that? It's one of those things that you want to first take pictures and you want to be like, what is this, right? <laughs> this is pretty cool. Oh, I found this so, sidekicks. <laughs> this is the what more unique fishes that we wanted to showcase and to talk about, and but also wanted to showcase the actual whole fish more so than ever. Um, so a lot of these fish are, you know, when you when you see it, when you go to the sushi restaurants, you sit down and all of a sudden the chef prepares for you and you basically get this white fish and you're like looking at it like this and it's like, hey, what is that? And they tell you, oh, it's a cornet fish. And you're like, huh, what is that? Um, so this case, we, you know, we wanted to showcase what the fish looks like. And the beauty of this uh, Yagara in, in Japanese, uh, and a cornet fish is the American name that the people uh, has given to them for people identification wise, um, is, is a very unique fish that when you get to present the fish whole by itself just like that, it gives a distinctiveness of like looking at it as like, is this something I can eat sashimi or even sushi? Uh, believe it or not, it's one of the prized uh, fish that's in Japan during the season of springtime uh, and going into the summer. And it's actually, believe it or not, it is in the same family as the trumpet fish that you see locally here as well too. They swim in uh, coral reef waters uh, feeding off of small fish. They basically have these long beaks. Um, they also feed off of shrimp too. So that's why they get that real red dark hue color from it in the, northern, uh, in the southern part of Japan. Um, there are different types of the Yagata. There's the Aka Yagata, which is the red uh, cornet fish. There's also the Ao Yagata, which is the blue one. And there's also the black one. Depending on what they feed off of, they naturally start to change their colors and also the flavor profiles of the fish uh, really starts to change up. Um, this one, the Aka Yagara, is the most prized one of all of the Yagaras. Um, it is one of the sweeter ones because of the, the nature of this fish eating more shrimp. So when you eat the actual fish later on, you'll have the texture to be a little bit similar to having a, a flavor profile of the sweet shrimp, the Japanese sweet shrimp. So it kind of like melts in your mouth as it goes. You have the darker ones that you can use it for saute and has a lot more firmer meat, a lot more textural uh, contrast as having a white fish on that one. Um, then we're moving along to the next one, which is, oh, sorry, I apologize. The Yagara also has the, the name, uh, Yagara means, uh, it means arrow shaped. So Aka uh, is the, uh, Aka is the red color. And then the Yagara means the arrow, the Ya means the arrow, and then the Gara means the shape part. So it's kind of, it, it's got this name just by looking at the fish, that's how they kind of start to name off a lot of the fish in Japan. Um, and then the very unique thing about it is when they write it in the uh, characters, the Japanese and the Chinese characters, it translates exactly like that. So that's why people can remember what the fish is by remembering what the shape looks like, that's what they call it. So. Um, then we move along to this unique fish right here called Tachiwo. Tachiwo, as we were talking about the translation about it, it means a uh, great uh, sword. And it's not because they want to call it a swordfish, but it's actually like the Japanese katana or the sword itself. It resembles that, dark, uh, that silver color as a metallic color. Um, the American name, they also kind of put it as cutlass fish, a cutlass fish, or also known as belt fish as well too. Uh, this one happens to be 36 inches, perfect for my waist, so it actually fits as a, as a belt. Um, we've taken some Instagram photos before, like we just put a red round on our waist to kind of like showcase to people how big the fish is. Um, and it, it's, it's a very unique fish, but this fish is pretty much available all throughout the year, between spring, summer. Um, and one of the unique things that we wanted to feature about it is that the flavor profile changes drastically during every seasonal changes. When the water temperatures gets colder, obviously the fish becomes a little bit more fattier. Uh, and then as the water temperature gets warmer during the springtime, it gets a little bit leaner. We're in that transition right now between winter to spring. So what happens is the flavor of the fish is very unique in the, in the, in the time of what it is right now. You have that flavor profile to have a little fattiness, almost like uh, Spanish mackerel, where you have that more white pearl looking color uh, of the, fl uh, the flesh when it's during the winter time. And during the springtime, as it gets uh, available, like right now is in pure in season here in Florida, waters are a little bit warmer, you get that more flesh, opaque looking skin color on the fish. This becomes a lot more lean. Uh, when it gets a lot more leaner, it has more full fisher flavor, uh, the more bolder flavor. So you want to actually grill those uh, so that you get that flavor to come out even more uh, because there's less fat. During the winter time, when you have like the tachiwo, uh, you want to just really just torch the skin just a little bit and then the fat between that just starts to melt in your mouth. Uh, and it's, it's the flavor profile of it is again, similar to that Spanish mackerel, but a little bit more luscious. 
it does fall into the same family as the mackerel, is the Spanish mackerel family, um, and also in the mackerel family as well too. It's just a different type of the species, but it also falls into the same type of the family. Um, I myself have been cooking a lot more French cuisine instead of the Japanese and Asian cuisine, and we've also used these in French as well, preparing a la manier. So it's actually cooked, seared in brown butter and start basting it as well too. The skin of this is very tasty because it's actually very thin skin, so you don't have to peel it off as you as you cook it and you blister the skin up. It gets that nice, good, crispy, like that crust that develops, and it's got that nice little crunch flavor uh, and the texture the difference as the fish is so soft and it just melts. You get that differentiate, so it actually brings out a lot more uh, beauty of this fish. Even if it doesn't look like the, the cutest looking fish, but it's definitely it's got it's got its uh, beauty and its flavor profile. So. Um, so that kind of covers this, our unique uh, fish about the Akayagara and the Tachiro. So, um, any questions? When can I eat it? No. <laughs> How do you spell them? <laughs> the Akayagara is spelled A-K-A and Y-A-G-A-R-A, -A Yagara. Tachiro is a little bit difficult. It's T-A-C-H-I. U O. Later on, when we're going to be preparing this fish for you folks to taste, um, I, if you haven't joined us for omakase, where myself or Chef Alex we prepare the courses for you uh, at the sushi bar, um, I do a little bit of something unique about the uh, the fish, where we prepare it not just the sashimi or the sushi style of it, but actually in a in a sense of called otsukuri, which means to be prepared. And so what I'm going to do is, it's going to be a very unique way of tasting the fish in a format that we do it almost like a crudo. So it's going to be accompanied with uh, a little bit more other elements to it. So it's like the one biter that you get to enjoy. And we did some pairings with it for you folks later on. So you get to enjoy some of the, uh, the, the sake that goes with it as well too. Thank you. All right. Great. Awesome. Thank you very much. And then so your next, your last uh, section that you're going to be going to is the kimenai and the snapper section. I can't wait to taste you. So excited to be here tonight. Um, I love, obviously, I love sushi, um, but I also like the opportunity to learn more about what I'm eating, especially something as unique as this. Um, we are having some fish that you wouldn't normally find in your um, uh, in your local sushi restaurant. So. <laughs> Does the fish come in fresh? We get it in from our, our, our friends from True World uh, twice a week, and so a lot of it is to you know maintain the quality and the freshness of the fish. And these guys do an amazing job bringing it to us extremely fresh. Uh, what we do with it is we you know when we get in a lot of these fish, you know it's it's depending on how fast that you know how busy that we get into, and then that we actually just take off. The best way of preserving this is to actually just take off half the fillet at, at a time and to maintain it to keep the other side on the bone. As you can see, you're going to see a lot of the bloodline, for instance, that's when the signs of the freshness kind of shows off. As we just cut it open, it starts to oxidize and the color starts to change. And the more and more that you actually take it off the bone and you leave it outside, the color will start to change more in a darker brown color. So when you first cut it open, and you'll have that darker, more full red, like almost that lipstick red color. Uh, and then as, gradually as the air uh, goes into it, it'll start to oxidize and change out. And that's the kind of like the sign of like, you don't, you know, pre-slice the fish a lot of the times and you make sure you maintain it. So if you keep it on the bone, it actually doesn't get oxidized and you actually maintain its freshness and quality a lot better. Thank you, Chef. Thank you.
good? Alright, just check in. I'm here for lighting. The other way to make sure the sushi is fresh is just for me to eat it really, really quickly. Growing up, 
I never get, um, I never used to eat uh, the kimedaya sushi. So like when I got older, like I, I start seeing more um, kimedaya sushi restaurants. I think it's because it's just the logistic of it got ma made it possible to get like the fish. I mean any type of fish, like flying everywhere from like Japan, like throughout the country, you know, to get them shipped like all over the restaurant. So uh, now um, kime, cause kimeda is getting more popular for uh, sushi, uh, sashimi style. Because this one, it meats hold very well, but this one gets a little bit, uh, the shelf life of this fish is like a little bit shorter compared to madai. So this one is, you know, it's, it's for supplier, it's easy to handle. But this fish is just like the shelf life of it is shorter, and also like the unpredictability of the supply. Um, it always challenges me. Um, but it's a beautiful looking fish. Like you, you don't get to see that like a whole fish. So like you, you, you'll be surprised like how um, it's, it, be, it becomes like sushi nigiri. Like and then you know you see like side by side. Oh, this one is this fish, and this one this is the plump part of it. And then also the seasonal, the, the white fish over there too. You get to see um, the taste, the difference between um, those different white. There's so many white fish. There's not many red meat fish. Katsuo, the one, the bonito we broke down, it's considered as uh, the red meat fish, and so is tuna. But those are two most two popular white. I mean the red meat fish. But the white fish, there are so many like fluke, fluke groupers, and those fishes over there. Um, there's so many different white fish. So like you know, if you go to a Japanese restaurant, the fun part of it to have different type of white fish. So like you know, let's, let me just have madai to start off, and then I'll just go pick some other white fish to just eat to you know just to see the difference. So that's like always fun for me to do when I go when I go visit sushi restaurants, like to get to have different type of sushi. Uh, it's the white fish. Um, in Florida, especially in Orlando, it's hard to find that um, restaurant who carries many different white fish because most of the time, um, you know, the fresh fish is time consuming and then it costs a lot of labor too because, you know, obviously fresh is, you have to cut it, it takes time and, you know, and then the shelf life is so much shorter than the frozen products. So a lot of Japanese restaurants, they don't bother to buy fresh fish anymore. Um, I mean, frozen is so much easier. We sell frozen seafood too, so I know how many, majority of the restaurant, they just deal with the frozen fish. Uh, but if, I don't know if we're gonna do the comparisons later, but um, the, when, you, when it's frozen and when it's fresh fish, the texture is completely different. And most of the restaurant who serves white fish is isn't what they call izumi dai, which is tilapia. So the taste of the, it, I mean, tilapia is uh, freshwater fish, and then this one is ocean fish. So like it has, um, when it's side by side, it's just completely different. Like I don't personally eat tilapia sushi, but uh, you know this one, I mean, I definitely you know, like to eat as a white fish. Forgive me if you said this in the beginning. So you said that, that this is um, one of the most popular fish in Japan, yet I don't seem to see this a lot on American sushi menus. That is true. Why is that? Well, like I said, um, the frozen white fish is most popular to use. I mean, especially in Orlando. I, I, I can't speak of other states, but I know like New York, Los Angeles, like California, they might be like more in the like forward when it comes to like sushi. But in Orlando, it's still getting a little bit better. But like yet, um, you know, a lot of Japanese restaurants, it's sad to say some restaurants, they don't know how to handle fresh seafood. So this, you don't serve, you don't sell this frozen or only fresh? Only fresh. Okay. From us. Other companies may, but uh, from us, we don't sell frozen. Um, and, well, it's frozen fish, it gets really, it, it became so much more popular because, you know, it's just, it's a great product. The frozen fish, like, it's already filleted and it's ready to use. And it's just like any restaurant, I mean, any chef, you don't have to be experienced chef. Like, you know, all you're gonna do is defrost and cut it. So, it, like a lot of Japanese restaurants do use those. So, um, you know, that's why it's, you know, maybe not as popular 
I mean, Mada is not as popular as the other, you know, like a, the frozen filet fish because it's just, you know, it, it's difficult to deal with the fresh fish. Is tilapia considered like a lower What is it? Is tilapia considered like a lower It is definitely a lot cheaper. A lot cheaper. Like a lot of them uh, around here, I don't think they ever serve, like they don't get, most of the time it's just frozen fillets, that's, that's like a really popular thing. Like they, um, it's already fillet, it's already clean, it doesn't come like this, it doesn't have skin or nothing, so it's just, all you gotta do is just defrost and you're ready to eat. And you know, it looks a great, I mean, when it's like sushi combination, you wanna see the different things. Like you want to see the red, like a tuna in red color, and there's like a salmon orange color, and there's some kind of like you need something white, you know. So like it's a you know great um, um, addition to just to see, just to complete the combination. I think to have to, just to have any white fish, and then unfortunately the the tilapia is like one of the most popular uh, frozen white fish, in, especially in Hawaii. Most of the time, tilapia. We don't eat tilapia much in Japan. Um, in Japan, for some reason, we don't like to eat much of like a freshwater fish. And the freshwater fish, I, uh, for me, it has a little bit um, like a kind of like a dirt taste to it. And I just don't like to eat as much of like, especially in sushi. Like I, I just don't find it really tasty. But um, I, I know other countries like uh, East, Southeast Asia, like Thailand and Vietnam, like they love to, they love eating I mean, fresh water. But it's just like I mean I guess I just didn't grow up like, eating. So where do you eat sushi in Orlando? Everybody wants to know. <laughs> <laughs> I know that you said that. Well, I eat here. I, yeah. I eat here. There's only very few options actually. For, well, well, our our kabuki, we 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 do like a really good. We, we serve pretty good fish over there. Um, well, I, I have this restaurant and I have a cadence in Orlando in Greenham Park and they do like a lot of fresh. Food. So we go like you know, one of my go-to. Um, but like sushi, I mean. If you want the quality fish, it's just the price that comes with. So like, right. it's, I'm not right. fancy. Like, like, I can't just see sushi all the time. Like, you know, it, it's like, you know, you can get like six, seven dollars roll yeah. versus six, seven dollars. You can only maybe eat like one, one piece right. from you know this type of fish. So it's just you know, if I just you know, if I have the money, I would just come here. <laughs> but if not. Uh, it's hard to pick. I'll just eat something. Else. <laughs> <laughs> it's a ramen. Noodle. It's a ramen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have. I've never. I eat a lot of sushi. I've never heard of. How's it? Am I die? M A T A I. D A I. Yeah, I've never heard about it before. I've seen it on a menu before. No, it's it's, it's getting popular. There's some like. We have a lot of clientele in the Asian too, like nowadays, it's getting more popular, but like back then, I, I started, um, I, I came into this company like nine years ago, back then nobody, nobody wanted to work with fish, like they wanted to stick with their own fish, but now it's getting a little bit better. Better, so you said like, this is called the Grand Madai? This is uh, Alfonsino. Okay. It's different. On um, it's it's not Madai. It's it's a different snap type of snapper. Um, but it's Kimme Dai. Kimme Kimme means golden eye. Okay. So this you know like you see the eyes are like a, one of like a big feature. I think they're doing sampling. Right? Thank you very much. Which one is it? I'm going to stick with the sushi for now, thank you. Mm. Jose, don't go anywhere. Oh. Jose, this is, what, what is this? This is the Kimadai snapper. Any Oshi Bori? Towels in your hand. Oh, sure, sure. The towels? Oh my god, that's so good. 
Sir, would you like any wishy for your hand? Oh, there's a sweet saltiness. Oh my god, that's phenomenal. Oh, hi, Jose, what's that? <laughs> Give me that here. I haven't tried this one yet. <laughs> mm. I can see, oh. It's like butter. It literally does just melt. Did you try that? Oh. They're going to have to drag me out of here. Can't <laughs> screaming tonight. That is a yummy fish. Holy smokes. There is nothing like um, really, really fresh, um, flavorful fish. It's not... Um, has no fishiness to the to the flavor at all. It's, um, it's sweet and succulent and decadent. And I'm stalling because I'm looking for more. Um, I want to try and get my menu back that I put down somewhere so I can show you some of. There we go. Oh no 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 no! Sit down. a tasty fish that I have never had before. Um, I have a feeling that this trip to Morimoto Asia is going to be very expensive for me because now I know of a new type of fish that I've never had before that you can only get fresh, which is obviously the preferred way. But look, we, when we sampled the octopus before, there was a, a, a very noticeable difference between the frozen octopus and the fresh octopus, um, not just texturally, but even in terms of the, the depth of the flavor to it. You wouldn't know the difference unless maybe you had compared them side, to side, side by side. But now you're spoiling me, just so you know that, with all this incredibly fresh fish. Um, it is, um, yeah, I'm, I, the only problem I have is that I'm not still eating it. Hold on. Yeah. Prepared version for you guys. I'd like you guys to enjoy the sake itself try some of the sashimi itself, the yagara by itself right over there. We're going to kind of set that up with a little bit of the soy over there. So you want to just do is just literally lightly kiss it with the soy and just enjoy it. Uh, we're just going to have everybody try at least one piece at a time so everybody gets a little bit of bite on that one. So you can kind of uh, use the same, uh, the soy remakin so that it was, you know, please don't double dip. <laughs> uh, thank you. So the thing that you can see, sorry, about the uh, Sakura Festival events here at Morimoto is that they are, they're very small, the range, but there's only maybe 30 or so people here, so you're not in a very large crowd. I believe the ticket for tonight was $39, $40, $45, somewhere around there, and they are also passing around um, samples of the, the Morimoto Chunmai and I think one of the other types of sake as well. I'm gonna give everybody a chance to get their sushi first. If not, uh, you never note to self, you never wanna get in line behind you, especially uh, when it comes to sushi. I, uh, 
I could do this all day, every day. And if you've never, uh, if you have never had sushi before, I think this is a great place to come for your first sample because one, you know the quality is going to be, um, you know, absolutely incredible. Um, you heard how often uh, sushi comes in. You see the way it's prepared with the love and the attention, and obviously the, the quality of the master sushi chefs that are here. So you can come in and try a few different things, just sort of um, uh, get past that fear of trying something different. And if you don't like it, I'm like five minutes away, I'll be happy to come and finish anything you don't want. Um, but I am obviously a huge sushi fan, so uh, especially here on a Friday in Lent, this, this is a good night. Uh, we're going to try and make our way up to get a sample of... Uh, So, very different from the Madai in terms of um, flavor and texture. Uh, this was a little bit more of a, uh, uh, a little bit less flaky of a fish. Should I hang on to these? Oh, good. I mean, that's the right answer. <laughs> um, uh, it was more of a, um, of a solid, a little bit less sweet. Um, that Madai right now is... Um, that's going to be hard to beat. And I'm just trying to remain close to where the food comes out of so I don't miss any of the courses that come out. But there's nothing like, um, there's nothing like having sushi that is um, as fresh as it is when it's served here. It's one of the reasons why I like coming here uh, is because I know the, the quality and the freshness of the sushi that comes in. Keep my eyes peeled just in case uh, more happens to more happens to come out. <laughs> Michael Camp, it's good to see you. Um, Kristen just convinced his husband here for his birthday. Nikki Keller, it's nice to see you. Darlene Nagy from West Seneca, New York. Uh, Michael Chef Morimoto is not here. Although, 
Um, he does come here often, and when they do have, um, when they do a, uh, a Chef Morimoto uh, omakase, which I think they call it Momakase from Morimoto, which is uh, has a premium sushi with it, but that would be a dining experience that I would absolutely love to try. Again, omakase is you go to the sushi bar, four people, I think ideally with two people, and you don't know what the chef is going to prepare for you. I mean, you can tell if you have any aversions or allergies, but um, it's just course after course of fresh, um, fresh fish, fresh sushi, fresh dishes um, prepared on the spot by that chef and really sort of takes you through um, an understanding of um, a little bit more about, I think knowing about the food and, and how it's prepared and where it came from really sort of makes, um, you know, for the full dining experience. And I'm trying to just keep my eyes open for um, any additional dishes that happen to come out. Um, the best sushi roll or fish choice that I've had here are the ribs. No, the, uh, the ribs are remarkable, but, you know, I've never had that um, Madeira, whatever it is before. menu at the sushi bar. That's a pro tip that I did not know. Full menu at the sushi bar. Um, if anyone's interested in the event, it's with the Vino Verde, we have the Yagata that you just had as a sashimi. Thank you. So what I have for you over here is the yagara, but what I did was sort them along with the cocos and some ditas, you see, it's the cucumber, uh, and we toss it with even the uh, kombu, the Japanese matsumai kombu, it's a seasoned uh, and then two people, two people the flavors of those, and then the soy-like flavor that you get from the very I was never an octopus person until tonight. There's a little bit of that crunchy, fresh kelp. There's a, uh, a sweetness to that very delicate sauce that's on top. Um, there is nothing fishy or off-putting about that flavor at all. I think, again, for a lot of sushi, it is that um, it's that idea of, of what you are eating. Some people have an aversion to eel or octopus, but it is absolutely it is delectable and delightful. Oh, she has more! I'm so excited. I'm standing in a good spot. I just realized. I'll help you get rid of that last one if you... So what is this? Uh, Madai. Oh, I'm so excited. This one, I have kind of prepared it just as simple as it is. Um, those of you guys that have my omakase pretty most recently probably had a little bit of this salt, unique salt. It's a caviar salt. It's actually the Cassian Sea caviar that's been dehydrated and grated on top, served alongside with local uh, radishes uh, and daikon radish that we just lightly pickled with yuzu. A little bit of shiso and chives. So you got that kind of contrast between the fattiness of this tachiol that kind of melts in, and you have that acidity of radishes that kind of comes through. So again, that fine balance, I think it's been very well alongside with this pairing of this dish. Camel?
Edison is actually, I believe he said it's a sort of a dried and sort of pickled caviar that's shaved on top. Shut your face. That is insanely tasteful for such a small bite. There's a lot of different flavors going on and you get that uh, saltiness on your lips and you get that little bit of a hint of sweetness on, on the sides of the tongue. Oh, I'm gonna, I am gonna. need to hang out right here just in case they have any more of that coming. Because that is absolutely phenomenal. Uh, Heather Demet, if this is actually sushi heaven for me, um, being able to, and that's why I like events like this, that more what it has for the Sakura Festival, is because you do get to try things that are unique, more importantly, you get to learn about it. You get them uh, paired with uh, different sakes as well, and really learn um, how the chefs put all this together. So this is a, uh, this is a very nice night for me. How is that very? Chef, could you just tell me again about what we just had with the... Um... Yes, it's the uh, tachiro, it's the belt, uh, the fish. What we did was we seasoned it with olive oil and a Caspian Sea caviar sea salt. Like it's just the caviar itself has been dehydrated and we just kind of grated it right on top. It looks like pepper oh. and then just a pick, like lightly pickled radishes. So that is remarkable. So and so many different layers of flavor in, in a small bite like that was phenomenal. Thank you. Thank you. Bit paired well with your wine. Did you enjoy it? Okay. <laughs> it paired well with my belly. That's what it pairs well with. I don't even need anything else um, to pair it up with. Although I will tell you that the June Maisaki, uh, the Morimoto June Maisaki here, some of the best clear sake that I've had. Uh, I prefer a, a cloudy sake. It's an unfiltered Nagori sake. Uh, it almost has a um, a milky look to it, but it is dead. That is my favorite. Uh, I wouldn't mind a little one of those to, tonight as well. Um, why don't we do this? I am going to let you guys go. I'm also going to uh, free up a couple of my hands to see what is coming later. If you go to patinagroup.com, uh, you should find a link there. Oh, wait a minute. There's something else coming. Hold on a second. Octopus or a octopus or Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Haley. Dad, that uni was for you. Um, when I used to go for sushi with my father, when we practiced law together, I'm gonna get choked up. We used to go for sushi a couple times a week and he loved, loved, loved. Uh, thank you. Um, he loved uni, which is, is seizure. I'm sorry, Bradley, what is this? This is a five-year aid sake. It's called Koshu. This is uh, from Chef Morimoto's collaboration with uh, Fukumitsuya Brewery in Chicago. Excellent, thank you. Um, so I was never a big uni person, but when uni is fresh like that, there's a uh, there's almost a, a sugary sweetness to it. Which, ooh, that has a um, it's a cold sake, but there's a um, there's a, a warmth that goes to it with this. And that's one of the things that, that events like this really help you do is yeah. match, you know, a, a, a pairing of the appropriate fish with the right sake to really sort of bring out the flavors of both. Again, this is one of the last few uh, Sakura Festival events here at Morimoto Asia. I believe there's three more, including there's a celebrity, sh uh, a guest chef one which might be sold out. There's a ramen one that's coming up, I believe, next week, which I may or may not be able to be here for. But go to patinagroup.com, check it out there. More importantly, 
come down here to Morning Motor Asia. Even better, when you do, hit me up and I'll come with you because food is best shared and enjoyed when uh, when it's had with friends. Oh wait, he's coming out with one more thing. Oh. Yeah, I probably need to go and, uh, and free my hands up for what is about to happen here. Thank you guys so very much for joining us tonight. I hope I have an amazing uh, weekend. If you celebrate Easter, I hope you have a, uh, a blessed Easter, and uh, I hope you have a delicious weekend at that. Thank you guys so much for watching and for sharing. Have a great weekend. Love you guys. See you. Okay, so for your last fish is your first fish that we serve, we were showcasing to everybody. It's the Katsuo, the Bonito itself. So we're finishing up the last few touches on this uh, Bonito right over here. Smoke on smoke. <laughs> <laughs> so Chef Alex has made the smoked version of the Bonito and also the unsmoked oh, version. Now you tell the, the difference uh, how's uh, which flavor you got.